Good evening, everyone. Uh, today's guest is Oleg from Oleg Products. Oleg Products was incorporated in 1991, but development of its product line actually started years earlier with Oleg Music Store. Opened in 1980 in Hollywood, California, the store's strong customer traffic and in-demand repair services by high-profile musicians provided a fertile ground for new ideas and market research. Oleg has a master's degree in oboe performance from Kiev Music Academy and was the principal oboist in the Kiev National Orchestra before immigrating to the United States in 1975. Since then, he has a full line of saxophone enhancements, ligatures, necks, and the saxophone itself. They are extraordinary uh, inventions, extraordinary aids to any saxophone player. And today we are joined with Oleg and we're gonna talk, discuss some of the more pertinent details and edifying information for all of you, both saxophone players and listeners alike. I'm sure you'll find this very interesting. Now, let's get it on with Oleg. Welcome, Oleg. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, Chica. I'm fine. How are you? Good. Oleg, I'm going to ask you a series of questions I've gotten, um, you know, in my career. I've traveled a lot using your products and things. And a lot of people ask me questions about, you know, my setup and mouthpiece, reed, saxophone model, etc. And so I'm going to ask some questions of my own, new ones I have for you, but I'm going to ask most of them from some of the people that ask me questions about what you do, all right? So um, let's say maybe we should start from the questions related to the products you make that are solving the problems most single reed saxophone and clarinet players experience. So let me start with a question I frequently get. This one, dear Chico, I have had many different brands and styles of ligatures I used through my playing years and honestly found no noticeable distinction between them. I spent lots of money buying newest, the latest and most expensive ligatures as well as cheap ones I had in my junk drawer and felt very disappointed every time. Would you please ask Oleg why I had an incredible wow reaction after trying the old ligature that, I, that you recommended? So tell us Oleg, please. Okay, um, I get the same questions uh, all the time from different uh, musicians, students, even teachers. Uh, there is a lot of confusion about the ligatures. And uh, before invention of the uh, ligature, there was no understanding of the true ligature's role in the saxophone sound, in, uh, in the pitch tendencies, in a, a response. Uh, power. Uh, many musicians don't uh, ha would have a problems with the reeds or attribute the acoustical problems uh, and sound problems to the saxophone itself or to the particular uh, instrument, particular brand, or even to the nature of the saxophone. Um, although musicians felt there is a ligature matters. Nobody knew or could quantify uh, the effect of the ligature on the sound. There's uh, at least 300 patterns, the last time I searched, were created and uh, filed uh, for a different type of the ligatures. All of them are uh, claiming the same thing like a special way of holding the uh, ligature or minimizing the ligature's effect uh, or uh, ligature's pressure on the reed. <clears throat> but uh, after invention of the ligature, the process that took me uh, 10 years, um, all of a sudden, the, all of the questions I had about the ligature's effect become clear. Some of the saxophone tendencies, uh, pitch tendencies, uh, octaves inconsistencies, some interval inconsistencies, some uh, per, um, pesky notes like IDs and the A's and the second octave, uh, A, C sharps and bottom response, all of a sudden <clears throat> uh, become clear that this is the effect of the ligature. 
we are the first company that ever uh, put the ligature in a spectrum analyzer and the picture was clear that all the ligatures, no matter what brand, no matter what material, uh, all of them are virtually the same. And actually the, uh, they are dampening a sound in the same pattern. Uh, so our, our ligature, uh, it's um, the material allows the reed vibrate freely. Uh, it's our ligature preserves the reed's natural vibrational modes and uh, its uh, harmonic complexity. So our ligature allows uh, the response peaks, uh, the resonance peaks to be where the pitch is, which means you, don't, you can play the um, saxophone without any humoring every note, without uh, just simply like uh, exhaling to the saxophone and saxophone would lock you in uh, where's, uh, in your best sound and your best speech. Uh, so I would even say that if you do not use the optimal setup, like a saxophone that is in tune, the ligature that allows the reed vibrate and produce a, um, the uh, maximum resonances, uh, no musician would uh, actually know his best sound. It, uh, so equipment is important to realize a musician's full potential. Uh, so I would say no other ligatures except the ligature uh, give a full representation of the musician's sound. Mm. Uh, I would agree with that. I um, uh, was traveling uh, with a band of mine, it's called Roots, and Benny Golson, who's a very close friend of mine, and we were in the, this band together. And Benny, I noticed when we were on the road, because I used the old ligature, and I noticed that Benny also had the old ligature. So we were on the stage together, and I looked over and I said, oh, Benny, you're using this old ligature. You got it from Ola. He said, yeah. I said, how do you find it? So we had a great good discussion about that, and we compared our horns together in terms of intonation and pitch and, and free blowing. And we both agreed that, that what you just said uh, was accurate and true. So thank you. Because <laughs> Benny's one of the uh, one of the great saxophone, the great saxophonists in the history of jazz. <clears throat> All right, here's another question. This one is pertaining to the situation that I've actually experienced myself when I was shopping for my saxophone. So it says, hi Chica, when I was looking for saxophones that I could play and love for the rest of my life, I went to several stores and tried several instruments of the same model of each big name manufacturer. All of them sounded and felt different. Finally, I thought I found the best one of at least 10 or more I tried, but after playing it for a couple of weeks, I started to notice some problems with intonation and response in the low register. I tried several mouthpieces I had in my case and different reed brands of various strength, but still can't feel confident in approaching the low register as well as second octave D, A, and C sharp. I also noticed some flattening pitch tendencies in my right hand keys, but didn't notice this as much when I was using a good read. No matter whom I asked about these problems, they all gave me different and unconvincing answers, ranging from bad reads to lack of enough practice. But most of what I heard is that it's just the nature of the saxophone. Is this true or not? If not, what can be done about it? Um, there is a lot of lots of uh, misunderstanding about the uh, saxophones. Uh, many musicians think that uh, uh, saxophones material matters. Some believes that there is a plenty uh, plating uh, of it uh, matters. Uh, there is a uh, you probably experience also 
that uh, going through this uh, same brand, same uh, model of the instrument, you notice big uh, difference in the sound response, speech, and tendencies. So this is a hardly allows to uh, attribute the sound to the ma material. As a matter of fact, material as a saxophone does not really matter, nor plating matters at, at all. There's only a ge um, geometry of the neck that is uh, responsible for a sound. And of course, uh, neck should match uh, a saxophone acoustically, because neck is where the, all the sound modes, modes, modes of vibration are formed. Um, so, saxophone can be optimized, and every, almost every saxophone can be optimized by matching the acoustics of the neck to the saxophone. We call it optimization. That means that uh, it's going to be no flattening pitch tendencies on the top, no crooked, so to speak, notes like a C sharps. Every note will be absolutely full, resonant, perfectly in, uh, in tune. Uh, that can be uh, reached with uh, with us without any effort. The power of the saxophone um, about 30% more projecting. The response is absolutely even. And musician doesn't have to control this, uh, the uh, mouthpiece and read that much. Just simply uh, relax embouchure will, and consistent delivery of the uh, air will produce a maximum re result and uh, fulfill the musician's potential. So the, why is the saxophones are so different? Because the minuscule differences in the production, because uh, the tolerances does not allow a manufacturer to uh, maintain exact proportions and exact ge geometry of the, of the saxophone. Uh, minuscule difference in the assembly, even uh, alignment of the keys are a uh, tremendous factor because uh, the airway stops at the, where the keys is open. If key is not open enough, or if it is a pad is too thick, or it's a resonator is hanging, the air waves is uh, become longer and you're losing a resonance of that note. So you can, the, the tendency of the musician would be to compensate for the lack of resonance by tightening embouchure in that note. Now, with that common denominator embouchure, the all uh, pitch go on all other notes goes uh, off, especially second octave. It's a, all of a sudden, A in the second octave would be sharp because in the first octave, the ligature, regular ligatures, lowers the resonance about 20 to 30 percent on different models. Hmm. So that is that why, for example, you know, every saxophone that I've ever met uh, complains about the C sharp to D. You know, um, well, let's say from B below the octave key, C. D sharp, and then when you press the octave key, the D, the D is always duller and, and less resonant. Uh, and so that's the reason for this. So that you're saying that with your neck, uh, with this, uh, this adjustment, this optimization, that D is no longer that dull, like the, it, it, it resonates like the B before. Absolutely. Uh, even more so, uh, this used to be the common notion that saxophone is a naturally out of tune instrument and yeah, that's uh, it's that created that spartan i would say spartan uh, attitude among the musicians i would say well i'm 
good musicians enough that I can play any instrument and I can compensate it. And those musicians usually do not realize that they are depriving themselves and, uh, of the, the pleasure of playing saxophones. They are fighting the instruments, they're spending a lot of uh, money on the reeds, complaining about the reeds. You know, they come and complain <laughs> about that the, they cannot find the reeds. There's only three reeds uh, out of the box they can use. Well, that's uh, another, uh, uh, another problem that our ligatures and saxophones uh, solved because the optimal setup uh, when saxophone is the ultimate resonator, which is a preserves everything you put in and your sound generator like a, a mouthpiece reed ligature combination that allows you to produce the full range of the uh, uh, of the overtones, so produce that incredible uh, effect. Just all of a sudden, uh, your sound, you know, blossoms, ex explodes. So all of a sudden, saxophone projects without any effort. It just some um, become everything you do becomes very efficient. You don't have to practice that much because everything comes out notes connecting every note is absolutely uh, resonant and the same uh, quality as the other notes the pitch is stable so all of it is uh, achievable and reachable just because no manufacturer before us ever matched the neck to the body, never do that uh, optimization, ne never optimize uh, uh, every note like we do. We, we tune the saxophone note by note <clears throat> through the neck. We manufacture the, the, the necks. Uh, they are all uh, very efficient and, and, uh, and I would say and improve the, any saxophone, but uh, optimization allows also to fine tune the neck to the saxophone to make it uh, the saxophone uh, uh, receiving the expand, extending the range of that uh, of its response to the to any setup. So optimizing the your uh, sound generator, which is a mouthpiece read and uh, ligature, of course. Mm. Did I answer that question? Yes, sir. thank you. That's very, very interesting. I have another question. Another, another saxophonist writes, Dear Chico, I have one of the latest models of uh, tenor saxophone, and I like the sound I eventually got out of it. But for some reason, it is a small sound and lacks power, especially in the second register. I tried to use harder reeds, but I get very tired in the second set playing with my band. I played Mark Sixes for many years and experienced the same problem and thought that having a later model instrument would eliminate the problem. Am I doing something wrong? Okay. Uh, it is a very common problem. And uh, you probably agree with that, that you probably at some point you experience something like this, that the second uh, register is not as resonant powerful as a uh, and uh, the first one uh, this is attributed to the uh, tuning of the instrument uh, which is a uh, uh, flatness of the octave is a common problem for of all the contemporary instruments so it does not allow you as a old um, methods was telling you to open your throat to have a bigger uh, on the second octave, because if you have to leap up and pinch the second octave, you cannot open the throat. And also, um, that for you cannot have a big tone, uh, deep tone, it's just always small one. So, this uh, particular um, 
correspondent of yours uh, had a very particular, uh, maybe um, a little bit exaggerated flatness on the, uh, on, on the octaves. So he has to uh, leap up too much, or, and that, that's why he needs to uh, play the harder read, because uh, the soft read would choke. As a matter of fact, the best way to choose uh, or select the instrument, uh, you need to use a light read, two, two and a half read, because light reads um, reflect the tendency of the saxophone acoustics, of the cone, of the standing wave in a, in a saxophone. So standing wave would control the soft read. So the fact that you have to use harder read tells that uh, you are trying to override the tendency of the saxophone, saxophone's uh, uh, standing wave. Okay, so it is a first indication that the saxophone has a tuning problem when you have to use a, a harder setup. Anything extreme, like extremely bright mouthpiece, or extremely open mouthpiece, or hard to read, tells that the musician uh, has to fight the tendency of the saxophone. Only a light, re relaxed uh, setup that can uh, it tell you that saxophone is in a, a good tuning and good adjustment and uh, basically good for you, that instrument. So ultimate match between a musician and the saxophone, when you are having absolutely no problems, you just, the a, uh, all reads will work that you use, not hard reads, you don't have to uh, practice to get your good sound. It just automatically you just wet the reed, blow in, and it selects you into your best and ultimate sound that you allows your body to uh, to be happy, so to speak. It resonates through all of you. You resonating along with the with the instrument. That's a that kind of personal. Um, uh, pleasure everyone gets when they get the ultimate setup. So. Ah, okay, well, that, okay, that, 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 uh, that makes a lot of sense. Um, here's another question I have from um, another saxophonist. I've heard many great reviews of Oleg's signature saxophone necks. I think I'm ready to buy one. Should I get a gold-plated or silver-plated neck? And what would be the difference in the sound? Would the silver neck be brighter sounding than the gold-plated or just lacquered? And how do I know that the neck I get is the best for me? Mm -hmm. That's an okay. interesting good question. Okay, there is a, so here we have uh, effect of the plating. Um, which is a, uh, I've been asked the question the same many times too. So the, the plating, whether it's a, a nickel or gold or silver, if it's a outside of the neck or outside of the saxophone, it has no uh, acoustical effect. However, uh, if you play this saxophone or let's say neck um, inside with a kind of heavy layer, you know, maybe three from three to five microns, it effectively shrinks acoustical mass. So saxophone um, with a smaller bore, it acts like a smaller bore uh, instrument. Smaller bore, 
uh, reinforces uh, high harmonics. Bigger bore reinforces fundamental. So the, if musicians notice difference, if it's not really only mental, uh, just kind of delusional, <laughs> but uh, like in many cases, if musician notice that there possibly the uh, acoustics of the neck was, um, I don't say compromised, but changed a little bit. If you feel the sound, uh, like a oboe is a, a small bore instrument, has a full, uh, a lot of high harmonics. So, and a little bit more, much more resistant. So basically uh, with resistance comes kind of, uh, density of the sound and uh, maybe development a little bit more highs. Musicians have to force the sound uh, or maybe even uh, use a harder read sometimes. But it's a very rare <clears throat> that somebody put so much heavy uh, material inside of the, inside of the neck. Um, very often, <clears throat> uh, in my past as a repairman and uh, uh, restoring instruments, <clears throat> musicians would uh, ask me, how come I, uh, I had an overhaul with somebody else and uh, it's, it, it changed the sound. Uh, it took me a long time to break the instrument uh, in. I would say, always uh, said in that regard, <clears throat> that you don't break music, uh, saxophone in. You basically adjusting to the saxophone that uh, you have. Saxophone does not adjust. Okay? <laughs> so what happens in, the, in a change? It's just uh, the minuscule <clears throat> um, change in alignment. Uh, neck could be compromised and a little bend in the neck could change the whole uh, tuning uh, situation. Absolutely. The one hanging resonator, as I said before, can uh, simply change uh, everything <laughs> in a saxophone, believe it or not. It's just because uh, inadvertently, uh, instinctively, musicians will start to compensate for that note adapting a common denominator embouchure. That's and really the, I'm sorry, that's really interesting. Was, uh, and the selection of the, of the reeds would be different because he would have to play with a tighter embouchure that have, would have to have a harder reeds. And that's what would be changing. He would not know that he's choosing the uh, different reeds. He would think that he's using the same reeds, but it's, it's not. So you're basically saying that in those in that instance, we th we're we're thinking that we're in control of the saxophone. We're breaking the saxophone in, but in reality, we're 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 adjusting and changing for the saxophone. Saxophone doesn't change; we change. And once we get comfortable with that horn, we yeah. falsely uh, yes, label yes. that we broke the saxophone in. <laughs> that's interesting. That's a, and, that's uh, a <clears throat> very interesting. Uh, so musician is actually a product of the instrument he plays. And uh, when the developing, um, it's like driving. So you are automatically drive sometimes without any uh, consciously doing all of the things they need to do. Same thing as a musician uh, adapts the, uh, the embouchure and the, all the uh, adjustments and everything, the posture. The posture is a good indicator of the musician uh, troubles. As a matter of fact, many times a uh, musician walks in for consultation. Uh, I ask him, just take your saxophone, put it on. And uh, by the way, he, uh, even before he makes a sound, he already putting, I already know exactly the problems uh, he has. Based because on his 
posture uh, that he already evolved with a saxophone and a posture is an indication. So for example, uh, having a, he would, uh, many musicians, they probably have to uh, notice that too. So just let's say have a posture of putting their head down. Okay. Yeah, what does that mean? It's a direct indication that a musician wedging the reed, helping the reed to push up for a second octave. Is wedging it down. Yeah. Okay. That so, all in, uh, you look at the uh, at the mouthpiece. Where is that teeth marks? Is it far, or it's uh, at the tip, or somewhere in between? This is also, and how deep is that? This is also indication of the uh, of the troubles, right? right. So your setup reflects the saxophone acoustics and reflects their problems. Um, also, <clears throat> the, of course, we already talked about size of the reed and, uh, and even uh, mouthpiece, just I see if a musician has a too bright mouthpiece, okay, too shallow mouthpiece, what does it mean? Why? Uh, and especially in conjunction with uh, where his uh, teeth marks, it, it tells right away the problem. What would it be problem? The, the instrument that out of tune uh, has a tendency to cut the high harmonics. Okay, ligature is a part of it too. If you don't yeah. have a good ligature, it also cuts the high harmonics. As a matter of fact, as you see uh, on the back, there's a, uh, the graph, the, the spectrum analyzer. Uh -huh. I should, maybe I should show you that. Yes, please do. Should I show? Yes, please. Okay. Can you, okay. So what we see, here, can you see it? Yes, I see. Okay, this is a uh, ligature. You see the uh, first three harmonics. Second harmonic, it's an octave. This is an A440 on uh, alto. Uh -huh. And after third harmonic, there is a severe dampening. Yeah. Okay. okay. This is a what? That it's a soft, soft ligature. Soft ligature. Now we have. Uh, plastic ligature, virtually the same. The peaks are in the same spots. And uh, I would like to also mention how important it's an A440, right? And see this uh, second octave peaks at 750 hertz, which is a 130 hertz below where the peak should be. Huh. See, this one also 750 hertz right in between. Okay. Now, metal ligature. Same thing. Same peaks, same uh, re resonance below the pitch, which is the best sound on the second octave. It would be below the pitch. Mm -hmm. Now, look at the ligature. Mm. So, Oh, all yes. Peaks, all the peaks, no dampening, and second harmonic at 880 hertz. I see and what you the uh, other peaks of the harmonics are true multiples of fundamental, while, while corresponding uh, peaks that are dampened on, uh, and let's say metal and other ligatures are all below. They're not true multiples fundamental. That's what you. You don't have the clarity of the sound, and of course, do not have a resonance. Because the resonance, nor power, because uh, combined powers of those harmonics. <laughs> That's amazing, man. That's amazing. Uh, give you that uh, what uh, uh, rich harmonical content. What it gives you, it gives you pitch definition. It gives you projection power. It gives you a uh, response and I give you a sense of presence. Yes. So when you're using our ligature, you 
feel and your uh, listeners feel that they are inside of the sound. Mm -hmm. Because we have uh, the long waves, medium waves, uh, short names, that uh, their full representation, and you feel that you're engulfed uh, in the sound. And so it's a totally different um, perception. So your musical message uh, delivered uh, with a higher efficiency. And that's why your listeners can relate um, to you, to your music, to your musical message and emotions you try to uh, project uh, better. Hmm, amazing, amazing. That's great. <laughs> a lot to think about. I have another question for you from another saxophonist. And then I have one of my own. <clears throat> you are a creator of saxophones with optimized acoustics. What does this mean and how different are your maestro line of saxophones from, let's say, Selmer, Yanagisawa, Yamaha, or even Eastman saxophones? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, my research, acoustical research, uh, started in the in a 80s when I uh, opened up my, uh, my store. I have a, a perfect pitch. That really bothers me uh, to listening the, uh, to some musicians and I always uh, wanted to know why. So actually that becomes my uh, mission. <laughs> uh, just try to answer these questions. Um, I started to experiment with the next that brought, uh, that I uh, start, then I start to manufacture the necks and the many, uh, and because pro uh, majority of my clientele was uh, uh, professionals who had the Selmer Mark VI saxophones at the time. Uh, my first neck was designed to improve the saxophone, uh, the Mark Sixes. So, uh, when I was moving the resonances up and down in order to tune the uh, saxophone, that's when I uh, noticed that certain notes I could not move as efficiently as a, uh, with my technique. So I started to look into the uh, other culprit possible. So that's how I end up <clears throat> 10 years later uh, developing the ligature. And that's when all of it, uh, I, that's a, the personal discovery because that now all of my uh, questions were answered. Now I understand the whole uh, acoustical system, the, the all in the saxophone, um, uh, variables that go into the sound production. And that, and that um, now our saxophones are optimized, ac acoustically optimized in a nutshell. Uh, almost any setup, light read, hard read does matter, but better of light read, responsive read, this produces the richest, um, spectrum of the harmonics, the lighter read, it's got a sawtooth wave. <clears throat> so you take the optimal saxophone uh, with a regular setup, read, you blow and you on your student or you immediately get your uh, nice professional rich sound without any compensation. So in, we had this uh, incredible uh, revelations when the student would, after five to seven years of practicing, would come to, uh, to us and had no sound, no response, just and constantly struggling, and would take our saxophone and uh, the mouthpiece and with a ligature and immediately within a five minutes or he would almost start dancing because it's a, a 
in front of his parents, it was a immediate bow response because saxophone, you don't need to struggle with a saxophone. You just simply have to blow in without any uh, excessive work. So it, our saxophone cuts in years in practice. They cut, uh, they eliminate the need for constant searching for the reed. You don't need to have a champion reed in order to try to play our saxophone in tune. The reeds will last much longer. Uh, you don't need to have an extreme uh, setup or bright uh, or or two open mouthpiece because uh, saxophone so efficient and you can uh, can scream it just all feels like uh, you're driving the the Ferrari because it's just so powerful and efficient. Um, so average setup, regular setup would produce the uh, ultimate sound of yours. It will reflect your specific morphology, your specific uh, need for uh, your own sound. Okay, well, you know, here's something I want to ask. <clears throat> My father, Von Freeman, we were on mm -hmm. tour and um, there was an accident with my saxophone and we had a concert that night. And so I didn't have a saxophone. So I had to share his saxophone. So we, <laughs> we did this strange thing, which was we, each one of us would play the melody or whatever the song was and then take a solo and then that he would give me his saxophone so that I could then do my solo. So we just shared the saxophone back and forth the whole night. This was a very strange night, needless to say. But he was playing an old Martin saxophone. And compared to my saxophone, it, it was as if I just breathed and the response was immediate. I mean, my saxophone, I, had, I felt resistance. You know, it was like, it was like the old Mark VI. I always, I never really actually played those because I, I always felt the resistance and I, I tended to overblow them. But his saxophone, mm -hmm. immediate, just, just touched, just, just blow a little bit and the note came out. The response was incredible. So I noticed that often when I played other horns like a king, the old ones, you know, the kings and the, um, cons and so forth, the old saxophone, the old Martin, that this was more common with the older saxophones than the ones today. So based on what you're telling me, I get the feeling that your saxophones and with your neck, with the ligature, this, this perfect, you know, this uh, 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 optimized version that you can play in almost any reed, soft, hard, you know, the, the, the response. And with mm -hmm. the response, not only do you get the quick response, but you also get the resonance, et cetera, and the intonation. Now, the old saxophones didn't have the intonation. You had to adjust. But they did have the response. And so uh, uh, what I'm asking is, um, how do the old saxophones differ from the ones today? And how have you taken the best of that? And put you know a best of all of that and put it together and, and all at once in your in your saxophones. Um, regarding your experience with uh, your father's saxophone, uh, yes, he has a neck that uh, he, uh, our neck, uh, and uh, that neck optimized his. Uh, saxophones. Yes. So that means when you were simply blowing into the resonance, it's so easy because it's a, you don't have to force it. Right. Uh, because it's a, all the, everything that you produce at your, uh, your mouthpiece were preserved. That's the nature of, uh, 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 of the saxophone that is efficient. It preserves everything you uh, put in. Okay, if you don't have to compensate, you don't have to uh, use the extreme setup, you don't have to do anything, you're just simply preserving. Saxophone is not efficient overall acoustical instrument, uh, but uh, 
I think I think it's uh, you know up to two, only two percent efficiency. But uh, just if your instrument is out of tune and if you uh, or out of adjustment, uh, out of alignment, it, it's even less efficient. So that's yes. why most of the musicians are working hard. So yeah. our saxophones are uh, absolutely joy to play because they are so responsive. Uh, uh, absolutely even to the register. Practically, you don't need to change uh, your embouchure uh, mm. going through the bottom to the top because every note is B and it's at and it's best. It's resonant, but a powerful uh, rounded. So you use embouchure not for uh, pitch adjustments. You use embouchure for coloring. So it allows you um, our saxophone tuning allows you to to play with an open throat, relaxed open throat, with O or U, and adding the depth to that, and coloring uh, with a, uh, your sound with an embouchure. Uh, yeah. so shading and, and coloring and... Uh, yes. Uh, for, uh, so when you have an open throat and you can, uh -huh, and, and the second octave, and when your instrument is in tune, you can have that all, all yeah, sound, that of E sound. Like in many, you listen to many uh, musicians, they're having that tiny E sound in the top when it can be rounded, like a voice-like O sound. Well, well, it, like a singer's. I, I thank you. That's very informative. And I want to show people this is your old legature, which I swear by. This has changed my life in terms of my instrument and playing. Just this, this ligature. I'm looking forward. I wish, I'm, it's just unfortunate that I'm not going to be able to get to California uh, to, the next, uh, to the show and actually try these new saxophones because I'm looking forward to it. But this old, leg this, this old legature is incredible. Vinnie Golson and I spoke about it. My dad, I got one for him before, and he was extremely happy with it. So um, thank you for your explanation um, and all of this information. Uh, <laughs> I think yeah, it looked like uh, our ligature. Yeah, that was your, that's what I wanted the people to see this. I want them to see this little thing and how much it, that mm -hmm. just they said. I have played every ligature. I'm not going to mention the names of the the different companies, but I have played, I think, every one. That it does amazing results, give amazing results. And that's why it's uh, one of the, if not the, the most uh, uh, sellable ligature, the most successful ligature. We're selling them for 20 years, and the, and, uh, as, as the more people know it's and heard about it, once they try it, they buy it. They put it on awesome. their own instruments, uh, saxophones and clarinets. For yeah. clarinets, it does the same same thing. Um, it yeah. makes it sound bigger, darker, stabilizes uh, uh, pitch in the top. It just doesn't matter. As many top musicians, clarinet is playing the, uh, our ligatures too. They're great. I swear by them. I've been playing them for many years, and uh, I won't stop. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, I appreciate your time. Appreciate you joining us. My pleasure. And, uh, I look My forward pleasure. to nice talking to you, Chica. We, we know each other for so long. Yeah, well, I remember. Uh, yeah, I remember yeah. the first time you, uh, you, you, when you introduced this old, this old ligature, it mm -hmm. was in New York. We were in New York, and yeah. I was like, it was like, oh, what, what did you call it? You call it the oh wow moment. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Oh, yeah. It's nice to reconnect. A nice, uh, you know. Yeah. Nice to reconnect. Well, we'll we'll talk more. Uh, there's uh, I have many yeah, have other. I, I'm introducing uh, your product line to to my students and other saxophonists because I think uh, I mean in addition to the old language, I mean you make so many other products like. Uh, the, the enhancers for the, you know, the people with different size hands that it helps them. And one of the great things, the F extension, you know, the, the, the F key extension, mm -hmm. that's 
incredible. Because, you know, I've always, the, the high G for me, uh, it's always been difficult for me to get it with the high F, you know, that high that way. That's just, for me, I just do mm -hmm. that. Uh, but I get it very easily on playing the B key with the, with the F sharp key and the bottom. It pops mm -hmm. out just great for me. So now with this, um, but I always, you know, I, I love using the fork, the F fork, F, mm -hmm. but back down to the B. But with this extension that you made, I never have to leave the B. So now my technique has just improved greatly. And uh, so, I, I mean, so many of the things that you make to help saxophonists and, and all of the innovations that you have made throughout the years have made our life so much easier and more productive. So a heartfelt thank you. <laughs> and uh, I'm well, you will. I mean, you know what, uh, with those enhancers, I mean, it's amazing at uh, how uh, this market grows. And just we, <laughs> we swamp with the orders more and more and more. Uh, and actually getting uh, new ideas, more ideas on how to improve it. So it's just uh, constantly working on the new products, new enhancers. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, the, our newest one was actually a, a trill key, three enhancer, enhancer from, um, from B to B flat uh, on a yeah. bottom, from B to B flat. So I don't, you know, some people, especially classical uh, musicians, already buying them. It's just it's a newest one. B so to B flat. Bottom from B to B flat. In the middle register? Well, no, B. Okay. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen that one. I haven't seen that one yet. So. <laughs> well, I will. I will send you the pictures. Okay. Yeah. Or videos. It's kind of kind of cool cool thing. Yeah, I want, I want to do something that was impossible I, to do. And I can't get my neck to arrive. Mm -hmm. My new neck from you. So, it, it, which uh, for all of you listening, you know, well, like uh, customize a neck perfectly for my instrument. How, how do you call it? Uh, you uh, optimize the neck for, for my saxophone. So I'm very excited about that. Mm -hmm. Well, I can, uh, um, you can, you know, people can buy our necks or uh, the way we started it, uh, basically we're, we take our original neck and uh, change the geometry of it. So if would have, would not have a, um, the sound, the, the bigness uh, of our neck, but it would, uh, let's say if it would take a Selmer Mark 6 that I done probably thousands of them, uh, just customizing uh, original necks. Let's say Michael Brecker had uh, one neck, silver yeah. neck that I re <clears throat> redone. And uh, another neck he bought is a gold-plated neck uh, that he was using in his best al album uh, called Ballad, I think. So that's... Uh, it's doable. I can take original neck and change it, but I need the whole saxophone to yeah. optimize. And right now, or just somebody can buy our uh, our neck, which is yeah. already uh, just most important is to fit the socket um, socket size, yes. just so to to match. And then uh, everything else, like uh, your father would experience, just would make it tremendous tremendous difference. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to my, uh, the, the neck, your old, the old leg neck that I'm going to be getting. Yeah, anyway. well, I want to mention it just because uh, before us, um, be nobody knew the uh, importance of it. We are actually started the aftermarket neck business. Okay, so there is um, many, uh, you know, especially lately, many, you know, copies or whatever coming yeah. into the market. But that's not what we do. Definitely, we can see that people do not understand. Well, I do. And I thank you for my edification, for my information, because uh, I feel much more informed and armed mm -hmm. with more knowledge to, to continue to improve my sound and my playing. 
Uh, and like I said, uh, very thankful for your help and all of your innovations that help help us move forward in that direction. So okay. well, I'm going to say goodbye and thank you very much, Oleg, for everything. And yeah. um, I look forward to our next conversation. Okay. Well, pleasure talking to you and uh, goodbye. Goodbye. My pleasure.